Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. You know, Tom Brady just had his appeal heard by the NFL, right? And according to reports, Brady came in looking good. Brady handled himself well. He, uh, you know, answered questions. He had a great demeanor and all of that stuff. I'm just telling you that none of that matters, right? I'm telling you, too, that when you're hearing about how well he did and the source of the information are people on Brady's defense team, then their statements don't matter, right? Understand, just from a legal point of view, right, just from a legal point of view, Roger Goodell and the NFL are just looking for very small pieces of information, right? Brady's a multimillionaire. The fact that he comes in wearing a good-looking suit, the fact that he has his hair cut and he, you know, has rehearsed answers and he looks people in the eye, none of that matters. All that matters, in my opinion, and why I believe Brady's going to be suspended, why I believe this appeal is going to fail miserably, is because the NFL already knows that air was taken out of the footballs. They already know that. Right? So, they're going to ask Brady, did you ever tell anyone in the Patriot organization that you preferred deflated footballs? Right? Now, the point is simply this. Someone deflated the footballs. Right? Someone did. So if Brady says no, he can look as great as he wants to look. Right? I would argue that that would be Brady arguing that clubhouse attendants on their own in a multi-million dollar sport decided to randomly take air out of the ball. That's just not credible. It's not. But let's say Brady says no, because if Brady says yes, then there are problems, right? If he says yes, there are problems. If he says no, that he doesn't like a deflated football, that he never discussed preferring deflated balls with anyone in the Patriot organization, what he's really doing is arguing that multi-year clubhouse attendance Right? One of the guys was there longer than Brady. Engaged in shenanigans with the football and then texted about the shenanigans with another clubhouse attendant. Right, One of them called themselves the deflator and that they did this on their own volition or at the behest of somebody else in the organization. Well, here's the problem. Right? The guy spoke on the phone with Tom Brady. Another question at the appeal would be, what did you discuss with these guys, Tom? Right? What's Tom going to say? That he's friends with their families? That he discussed how, you know, let's say a daughter, a son, a parent was doing? That they discussed their golf games? The volume of the communication between Brady and the guys really is going to prevent Brady from claiming that he barely knew them, claiming that he didn't talk with them, right? It's just not credible to believe that Brady didn't discuss football with them. The guys actually refer to Brady in their own private correspondence. They refer to him. Is it credible for the NFL to believe that they're just referring to Brady for their own reasons and that they didn't have instruction or communication with him? Brady also gives them memorabilia worth tens of thousands of dollars. Why would he do that? Think about it. Understand, too, the pattern of deflation was so great, the Colts tipped off the league to it before their game. 
In other words, that Colt game wasn't the first game in which the Patriots used deflated footballs. Right? If Brady shows up and says, I know nothing. I know nothing. This is all over my head. I was friendly with some guys who attend to the locker room. That's it. I gave them some gifts. I talked with them from time to time. But I know nothing about no deflated footballs. The guys just happen to mention me in their texts. Right? The guys just happen to refer to themselves as the deflator. Right? The footballs just happen to have been deflated so many times that an opposing team complained to the league. So look, don't be fooled by these press reports. I know there are photos of Brady walking into the appeal and he looks like a million bucks and stuff like that. Don't be fooled by hearing that Brady did well on the stand and all this other stuff, right? The bottom line is the content. Ted Wells was there, right? Brady, of course, didn't want to turn over his phone records to Ted Wells, right? Understand, what's he going to do? Smile and say, you know what, for privacy reasons, I still don't want to turn over my phone records. Or is he going to own up to the number of communications he had with these guys? Keep in mind, too. It's going to be hard for him to be selective with the phone records. What's he going to do? Say, okay, I'll show you the calls I made to these guys, but I'm not going to show you the text messages I sent to these guys. Come on now. Right? The Patriots were busted dead to right. Tom Brady is busted dead to right. This is a dog and pony show by a guy, in my opinion, who just wants to look like he's fighting the charges. He doesn't want to concede guilt. Right? He'd rather hear, in my opinion, that he lost the appeal than to not have appealed. Right? He'd rather play O.J. Simpson here and pretend that he's done nothing wrong, regardless of what the evidence shows. The evidence is overwhelming. Right? Also, understand, some of his team's arguments are just downright silly. Right? They want you to believe that you know, atmospheric changes in pressure could have led to the deflation of the footballs. Of course, the only balls that got deflated were the balls the Patriots were using, right? Understand that theory, atmospheric pressure, ignores the fact that the Colts tipped off the league to possible deflation of the footballs before the game, right? The NFL inspects the balls before the game. Then they wait till halftime. Then at halftime, they take the balls, right? Because, of course, when they inspected the balls, they're fine. At halftime, something has changed, right? So, if I'm Tom Brady, after all of this dog and pony show, and the league comes back and says it's still four games, or if the league, for political reasons, says Tom will knock one game off. It's three games. I take that penalty. I'm telling you right now, Tom Brady's reputation is going to take far more of a hit. If he gets slapped on the wrist for something I believe most of us know he did. Right? Sometimes you need to be punished a little bit. In my opinion, the four-game length right now is a complete joke. This guy played several teams with playoff aspirations, playoff possibilities, during the period of time in which, right, balls may have been tampered with, right, between when the initial texts take place right after the Jet game and, of course, when they're busted in the AFC Championship game. Understand, that period of time also includes their playoff game against the Baltimore Ravens. So Brady should feel lucky that he's only getting a four-game suspension and not, in my opinion, at least half a season, if not a season suspension. Right? This is serious, folks. The Patriots may not have made it to the Super Bowl, but for some chicanery. Understand, across the board, the numbers indicate something's wrong. Guys who are fumblers on other teams put on Patriot uniforms, 
LeGarrette Blunt, for example, and then suddenly are able to hold on to footballs. Right? The Patriots have a much lower fumble rate than the rest of the league. Maybe that's great coaching. Maybe that's something to do with the football. We'll find out this year when the Patriots, of course, are under greater scrutiny and are using regularly pumped up footballs. So all I'm saying is this. Roger Goodell and the NFL lawyers in the room are just looking for specific information. Tom, did you ask anyone to deflate footballs? Did you ever tell anyone you preferred deflated footballs? Tom, how many times on this day did you speak with these clubhouse attendants? How many times did you call them? Let's see the records from those calls. What was said? What did you mean in this text? to these clubhouse attendants. Are you turning over the tax to these clubhouse attendants? I'll tell you what, if I'm Roger Goodell and I'm there on some QB's appeal and I say, okay, great, I'm glad you appealed it. You know that a lot of this case is based on texts and phone records. Tom, are you turning over your text today that you sent to these guys? If he tells me no, if he's not there ready to turn over his phone records, if he tells me no, man, I got to tell you, I, I can't even envision why I would take the appeal seriously after that, right? Trust me, I wouldn't be there looking at the quality of his suit, looking at his body. I couldn't care less. At this point, I already have the evidence. Right? Brady's team wants you to believe that clubhouse attendants decided unilaterally on their own to deflate footballs. Is that credible to you? It's not to me. I'm expecting Brady's suspension to be upheld. Maybe for political reasons they cut a game. Maybe two games. Right, But don't be surprised if it stays at four games. I'm not buying Brady's side of the argument. Understand, he's leaving no wiggle room here, right? According to reports, he's not saying, you know, people know I prefer deflated footballs. He's not even owning up to preferring deflated footballs, right? He's not. So he's coming in and he's doing a, hey, I don't know anything about anything, right? The clubhouse guys referring to him in their correspondence, he doesn't know anything about that, right? These guys, if they deflated the ball, I don't know anything about it. I can't comment on that. I can't tell the difference between a deflated football and a fully inflated ball. That's what he wants us to believe. In my opinion, that argument, no matter how well presented, is simply unbelievable. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.